had some memorial cards over by the TV. If you haven't pulled up, please do. And also we have a book flip over to my right. Um, Willie is going to kick it off, so everyone to please find their seats. Uh, we're going to get started. Thank you. Hi, my name is Willie Snow, and I'm not sure how many people... Anybody ever met me before besides Jack and a few others? Okay, let me... I'm going to just talk about... Uh, I'm going to talk about... I've known Irv for over 20 years. Um, I know Irv uh, at a place in time that many of you never knew him. Anybody ever known from Bethel Island? I met Irv in about 1994. At that time, uh, Irv was not doing terribly well. I know that he had lost a daughter. Uh, he was working construction on Bethel Island and uh, living in his little houseboat. He would never let me come look at his houseboat. He said it was a really bad, ugly houseboat, but ready to sink at any time. He probably was living pretty hand to mouth. And I would say, I'm a psychologist, he was probably pretty clinically depressed. Life was pretty bad. When I met him, a uh, friend named Paul Pritchard, fellow glider pilot, said, Irv, you got a goose nest in. You're looking pretty bad. Here's some money. I want you to take some glider lessons. And so I was a new person at that time getting lessons. I was uh, in my early 40s. Irv was of the same age. And then this guy could walk up the field, and we kind of met. And so here we are, a couple of people. I'm a university professor, National Guard officer. Irv is there. We struck up this friendship. And let me tell you, I've watched her transformation over 20 years. At that time, Herb was really struggling. But uh, he became really part of our family. He would come over for holidays. Uh, we would go camping, and many of you don't know that, we would go, we were from the Byron Tracy area, and we would go flying up in Tahoe this summer. So some of the favorite memories is you know, we would go camping, Irv would camp next to us. Uh, he knows all our kids. He was at Tara's wedding. Uh, he just has been involved with our family from the beginning. But I, but I, when I talked to Irv, I don't think Irv ever saw was very smart. And I don't ever think he really had great expectations for himself. But working with him and talking with him as a friend, I remember, you know, when Irv said, you know, this isn't going to cut it. I need to do something different. I remember when he told me that he was going to apply for the CHP, because I know he used to drive trucks. By the way, I think he's on construction, truck driving, he knows a lot of different stuff. And I remember, you know, just to be worried, you know, I know he had some tax issues to deal with, and I remember we were talking about getting his the IRS cleared out because he you know, worked for the government, right? And he got all this kind of stuff, and then he gets this job, and he is now hired by the CHP, and he's at the truck, uh, the trucks, uh, what's that? The truck scales in Gilroy. And one of the best parts of his life, I remember when he moved from that old boat to his little apartment uh, in Hollister. It wasn't much, but it was really a step up. We had given him some used furniture and kind of decorated the place, but that was really a step up. He had had an old truck that Paul Pritchard sold him for next to nothing. And uh, it was really cool that all of a sudden he's got a eight to five job. Well, it was even better, Irv had more money, so me and him got together and we bought a glider. We were part of the glider club, right? And so we had no other old gliders. So one of the relationships that we've had is we've been co-owners for years of glider, Sierra Denver Oscar, and uh, we fly together. So for many of you who don't know Irv as a pilot, um, and even though we, we, we think about the loss of Irv, I know that Irv has done some things that you will never do. He's probably seen some things you'll never see. You know, flying along at 16,000, 17,000 feet without an engine in the Sierra, looking at Lake Tahoe. You know, we share memories that many of you just can't imagine. If you ever want to go to Glider Ride, talk with me. Uh, if you want to go ahead and you know, maybe you can share some. I do have a video at some point that people can look at. I put a couple pictures there. But anyway, I've watched her grow. Now, unfortunately, Somebody convinced them to move to Southern California. And that was Janet. 
<laughs> well, I lost, but you know something? I say that all facetiously because, you know, Kurt had a job now, we had money, we got a glider, we are doing really cool, but Herb was lonely. And, uh, and then he talked about meeting Janet and connecting. And I looked at the pictures, I said, you know, I always called the Herb look. Herb always had this kind of look on his face. Still kind of grumpy at times. But I remember at the wedding, I've never seen Herb such has such a big smile. And you know, the early days, there was a lot, a lot of smiling going on. Not a lot of smiling. He would joke, and he was always kind of grumpy sometimes. You know, I always told him, I said, Herb, you got a great heart. But some of the people see you, you look kind of grumpy. When you met Janet, you know, you know, you probably could be grumpy at times, right? But definitely, the smile would continue and, and it would grow. So we've maintained this relationship for, you know, for over 20 years. And now, by the way, there's a lot of different types of people in here. So is anybody else in the Soaring community? Anybody from Orange County Soaring? Okay, what's that? I like glider pilot. So there, so up in Northern California soaring, we have he has tons of friends. I'm down here from, from that group. Um, he was in Orange County soaring here. How many are the California Highway Patrol? Yeah. yeah. Thank you for being here. I know also Irv bought a, bought a Harley and how many are how many are Jeff Harley riders with them? And how many are just family and family and friends? Even though it's very sad that, that Herb has passed, you know, when I look back 20 years, it was it's funny when I look at those pictures of him wearing a tie. How many have seen Herb wear a tie? When I saw that, I gave him a hard time. I said, Herb, you're wearing a jacket and tie. Look how far you've come. I used to give him a hard time. But you know, he did come a long way. But I'm gonna go and say more than that. We didn't just share gliders. Uh, we just didn't share you know, friendship. You know, he really was, you know, my best friend. And at the end, he told me he's just look like a brother to me. I think it dawned on us, you know, that I have four brothers, but there's nobody else who would call me every week. If I needed somebody, I would call her, and he would call me. Texting back and forth, you know. Honestly, I wish my other four brothers were as faithful as her was. And um, it's this kind of a thing where, you know, it's funny. It's like every time I would go flying, even though her was down in Southern California, after all of my flights driving home from Truckee or Tahoe, we'd be on the phone back and forth. Or her would call me about a flight that he would have. And so we would just talk back and forth. So the thing I'm really going to miss the most is just have somebody that I can share with. And the one thing is, you know, Erd would always say, you know, that he wasn't very religious. Um, I taught at Christian University for years. And I told Erd, I said, I haven't met anybody in my life who I could trust. When we bought the glider together. There was no contract. We just shook hands. I knew that Erd, we didn't, we didn't need a contract, which is probably pretty silly in today's day and age. There was no thing on paper. We just agreed I was going to buy it. I put it on my line of credit. Herb said, yeah, he'll pay back his share when he could, and he did. All the time, there never, there never was any kind of formal relationship. You know, we just went ahead and, uh, and did everything, you know, shaking hands. Herb would always go out of the way and make sure that, you know, uh, that none of us, anybody felt bad, we'd probably only turn to each other. So some people, they might be friends, who's you know, they always like, get the best of you find their financial deal. Herb would never have done He's also a person that I can trust perfectly. Uh, I told her, I said, you know, you're somebody that, uh, and by the way, this is a diversity. I have a lot of my Christian friends that I can trust. So I would say that you're really not, I believe that, you know, you know God and God says you. And um, I know what I think about God now. So let me just say that I'm going to take that. Thank you. 
right, we'll talk about that later, guys. All right, well, thank you. Guys. <laughs> I explain all. Thank you. Okay. Who next? Thank you. I've never seen you before. Can't hear you. Say what? Hold it closer to your mouth. <laughs> can't hear you. You can't hear me? Yeah, yeah, there we go. <laughs> it must be the hearing aids in my ear. The <laughs> Anyhow, uh, I was wondering if the ones that were the last time I were to school this. It was uh, just a relative of the ride, and uh, it was kind of an honor for me to uh, hear her play repeatedly. Uh, that was one of the finest, best rides we've ever been on. It just very high, all the way to Sturgis, all the way back. And, uh, it was my friend, and I'm missing her. So, it's a lot of <laughs> and I broke the rule. Uh, we're going to be standing over here just so I can turn up the uh, speaker a little bit, and I don't want to get feedback, so sorry you got to stand in the sun a little bit. What's up? My name is Charlene, and um, I'm a short timer with Herb and Janet. And I don't think that you have to be um, friends or family with anybody for umpteen years or a week. It's how they impact your life, you know. And um, through the grace of God, my cousins um, Robert and Gigi, who are great friends with Urban Janet, um, they invited my husband and I to. Uh, just going over the house and have a casual uh, night of wine, and unbeknownst to me, I would experience the most fabulous, the most fabulous jalapeno poppers ever. I'm not a jalapeno girl. I don't like spices. I'm a total wimp. But Irv can make these jalapeno peppers stuffed with cream cheese, oh my god. And bacon, wrapped in bacon. And who doesn't love bacon? I mean, ah. So, um, I had some wonderful wine. I got to know them. The genuine people down to earth that would give you the shirt off their back. And, um, you know, they came to our wedding. They probably knew us all of two weeks. And they supported us. Janet, I love you, girl. Anyway, um, so to this day, I have tried to duplicate that recipe. I have made jalapeno poppers with the cream cheese and bacon, and just the way I experienced that, or I saw him put it all together and barbecue it right in front of me. And of course, I can't duplicate it because the guy is in a class all by himself. You know, like so many other people here. Just so kind and um, so I'm grateful and eternally grateful for having known them for such a short period of time. Or but Janet, we plan on taking that train. We're gonna go down to Oceanside and see the friends and cousins and and um, you know what? I, I truly believe that Irv is in our heaven above with the God our Father. Um, barbecuing those jalapeno poppers for the angels above. God bless you, Earth. We love you. Hi, my name is Sandy. Uh, I'm an alcoholic. Oh no, wrong name. Oh, no. no, I'm from Earth's friends and Janet's friends from Patsy's bar, which is all these people over here, all the drinkers over there. <laughs> and um, bike riders as well. We're the Harley riders. Um, I just want to say a couple of things about Irv. He was always there for us. Um, he's greatly missed. Uh, we have a party every Christmas. <laughs> Our Tinkerbell party. It's a pajama party of sorts. And Irv. The first year that we had her there, he said, you better not fit me in anything really bad. So we did. And he was wearing little uh, Rudolph the Reindeer, and yeah, little Rudolph the Reindeer thing. And what he didn't realize, that after we all got dressed in our uh, pajamas, we had to go to the bar dressed like that. 
<laughs> really everybody else had a great time. Er was like this, am I really doing this right now? <laughs> but you know what? He came every year. We've been doing this party for years and years and it was a good sport all the time, right up until the end. And he was there this Christmas as well. In his Batman onesie. <laughs> and I just want to tell you, Janet, all of us here, all your Patsy's people, and Krista from your your friends and your neighbors, we love you. We're there for you, always and forever. We love you. just up here a couple minutes ago said that uh, it, it doesn't matter how long you know somebody um, I actually saw Irv twice in my life and the first time was I think 2000 was it last season guys help me out here it was last season for the uh, football season and my friend my good friend uh, Robert Dodd and his wife Gigi they invited me over to their house and we live in Oceanside so they say, hey, we're watching the Packers game. And we got our uh, friend Irv and his wife over at our house. So I said, okay, we'll be on over. And I had heard about Irv a few times from Robert because he works for CHP. So he told me, hey, I got this friend Irv. And I thought nothing of it. So the minute, uh, well, Bob said, hey, my, he told Janet and Irv that, that I was going to be coming over with my wife. And he goes, yeah, my friend Scott, he's a firefighter, and I actually am a firefighter in Orange, and I'll get to that here in a minute. But So when we walked in the house, uh, Janet said, who is, who is that guy? And I might be getting the story a little bit off here, but uh, what's his last name? Sorry, I'm sweaty. Uh, Janet, his last name is Bob. And so she, she was staring at me, and I didn't, I didn't pick up on it. I was looking at the TV or whatever. And she goes, is your dad Gary? And I said, well, yes, it was. She goes, you're my baby. I babysat you when you were a baby. You know? So uh, and I didn't really feel like he was a kind spirit, just a good human being. I, I thought he was a calm individual, just, just, a, just a good guy. So... Anyways, that was a very emotional day for me to meet Irv and Janet because it was like going back in time. But then fast forward, I, I knew Irv was sick. And I'd always ask Bob, hey, how's he doing? And Bob would go, hey, he's hanging in there. And he's off work and what have you. So one day I was working on our Engine 5, which is at Maine and Chapman, and I'm also a paramedic. So we got a medical aid call at the CHP office. And it was for one of the guys, he had a syncopal episode. Um, and there was Irv as I walked in and he was so excited to see me. And at that time I didn't know, hey, this would be the last time I'd ever see him. But I just remember, hey Scott, how's it going? And he just was, again, that kind spirit. So I'm very thankful to twice have met him. And um, I just, just want to say thanks. So. I'll say a uh, quick story about her. Um, I'm Alex. Uh, like my family has been saying, we go to Pirates Cove. Uh, we've been about like five or six times. Um, a couple years ago, Herb went, and that was the only time we went on a river trip with us. Um, and also, first off, um, if he was here right now, he would look at me, pull me over to the side, and go, what the hell are you wearing? Um, <laughs> because I'm the only one wearing a tie. So that was his kind of sense of humor he would do. But at the river trip, um, we had a storm and we, we had jet skis, boats and everything. And the storm was coming in and I was trying to pull the jet skis up. And Irv being a big guy, he kind of pushed me over to the side and said, I got this. And I was like, all right, Irv, whatever you say. He picked it up one handed and pulled the, the jet skis up for me. And I looked at him and I was like, all right, show off. 
So the next time we were going, and it was the next day, we were riding jet skis, and he wanted to ride with me. And I said, all right, do you want to jump on the back? And he said, no, I want to go on the other one. And I said, okay, do you want to race? And he said, sure. So I was like, all right, I'm going to go easy on him. And this was his sense of humor again. He said, all right, let's put 10 bucks down, whoever could get to the bridge and back. And I was like, all right, I'll go easy on you. He killed me. Um, and he told me to buy him food. I never got the chance, but I will always remember that. So Herb, this one's for you, and thank you everyone for being here. Scales. The senior officer Camilleri, Joe Ellis. It was the most perfect job that anybody would ever want to have. And I was talking to Tony today. They sent me to commercial school. And Irv was my instructor. <laughs> Irv was here's my Irv. It took Irv 15 minutes. If he didn't know you, he was shy. After that, you would never shut him up. So we're at commercial school. And uh, it was at the Rainbow Scales off the of 15. And the officers, the, the inspectors would push a button, say, hey, we need a vehicle in there. We don't know what vehicle we're gonna get. That's what they did. So they send in this truck with this big old long telephone pole on it. And her job is to close the door. It wasn't San Onofre, it was outside on the beach with Tony's uh, ribeyes. <clears throat> so Irv closes the door and we had this really mean person, her name is Candy. And she ran into the lieutenant commander because she didn't like her. I didn't know her. She runs in and goes, he almost closed the door on that pole. Now Irv is teaching me how to do a walk around a vehicle. So I'm behind the vehicle, I'm behind the pole, between the pole and the door. And this lieutenant commander comes out, Irv, he almost closed the door on this pole. And I'm standing, I'm like, well then how am I standing between them? Candy was a mean person. And then I get a truck. And I caught it on fire. <laughs> and we had to take all these fire extinguishers and put it out. And then after we put it out, we wrote him a fix-it ticket for not having a fire extinguisher. <laughs> and then Irv wants me to go flying with him. Where are you, are, sir? God bless you. I will never go in an airplane. I don't like airplanes. One, I don't like airplanes without motors. <laughs> Everybody's been on a jet. And if you hear this engine go, you know you're in trouble. Go in an airplane that you don't hear anything. I ever took one of my, uh, one of my Blue and Gold brothers, uh, Gafferty, I think it was, who took him flying, and he goes, I'll never do that again. <laughs> So, when we were in commercial school, it was Irv, he's from Gilroy. What does Irv know about Southern California, Oceanside, and all the cool people that work at San Onofre? He doesn't know shit. So we get done with school, Irv, let's go have a beer. Can't do it, I got a lady. You're a liar, Irv. Dear Irv, you don't have a lady, you don't have a lady. I just found out today that when the state paid for Irv to stay at Embassy Suites with the cocktail hour at five and a free breakfast, Janet was there. He really had a lady. 
And then, so I'm at San Onofre, as I said, it's beautiful on the beach, and you, you can't beat it. And Irv's up in Gilroy, and I'm like, dude, you need to transfer down here to, Gil to, to San Onofre. It's, I have the greatest crew, they're, they're the best people in the whole world. And Irv's like, well, you know, Gilroy, dude, there's nothing in Gilroy but onions. I mean, what, what's wrong with you? Garlic, whatever, it's all the same thing, it grows in the ground. <laughs> So Irv transfers to San Onofre, and I thought it, I had something to do with that. Nope. It was Janet. And then we started getting a little close, and Irv's telling me, I worked here right here in the city of Orange for, I don't know, six years, that it's a great, it's a great town. Captain Connor will tell you that. And uh, talking to Irv, Green Bay Packer fan. Woo! Go Pack up! Herb, go, Herb goes to Arkansas to help the ants out, right? You already heard that story. I said, I'm a Razorback. He goes, are you lying? No. Comes back, I got a ball cap and a shirt. I was going to wear it today so I can go. I'm all about the Razorbacks. All about the Packers. We have a training day. Now or later on, we have a training day. And I tell Herb, we're going to take my truck so we're not on state time because we had to go to Seal Beach. I'm going to take you to my favorite bar in Huntington Beach. It's awesome. It's called O'Connell's. It's beautiful. We go in there. They ring the bell at 2 o'clock. And he goes, what's that about? I, go, I don't know. Free drinks. Now, Irv says, I'm going to take you to my bar. I can't compete. It's the best in the whole world. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. So now, Irv says, you want to go flying with me? <laughs> Dude, let me see. Every time we're together, I, I, I caught a truck on fire. I'm thinking, no. So I promote the supervisor, and Janet and Irv have me and uh, my beautiful cousin Charlene that we saw earlier. They have a us over for dinner for what they call a surf and turf. Fantastic day. My wife does not like Herb except for his guacamole. <laughs> but they have one parking spot in their condo track. And we're trying to accommodate the cousin. So Janet and I take my truck and we park, we park directly across the street, directly across the Toro Road. And we walk back. It's all fine. So now it's time for everyone to leave. Now Herb walks with me to my truck. So we get my truck, we drive from the Honda Center to here. Straight shot. Red and blue lights. <laughs> Irv goes, what did we do? I said, it's not about us. There's a domestic violence or something going on in this place. <laughs> White lights. Oh, it's us. <laughs> hey, Irv, deputy's going to get And I hand it to him. And he says, you know why I stop you? And I said, honestly, I don't. From that street to this street. Honestly, I don't. He goes, you are leaving. <laughs> and Irv says, how in the fuck are we going to leave when we went from down there? I'm like, Irv, shut up. <laughs> shut up, Irv. <laughs> so the little deputy dude, he's looking at me, he goes, all right, well then you made a wide right sweeping turn. Oh gosh. Herb. We went directly across the street. <laughs> Sir, get out of the car. <laughs> what are you doing here? I said, my buddy lives here and he made a, a nice dinner for us. So, he lives here and he made dinner for you. Yeah. All right, here's your stuff back. Have a nice night. I get in my truck. It's all good. Irv is still bitching out this little lady, uh, lady deputy. <laughs> what do you mean on where the Catella office is? It's right next to your, your firing range. It's everything. I will never get in a plane with Irv. <laughs> and as you already know the story, that's Scott Monica over my house. Met him at a pizza parlor for God's sake. Good job! I know. Monica... Um, Monica was... Scott's babysitter, it's amazing. My, my world, 
My room is getting this small and I love it. Oh. Sorry. You're the reason for all this. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, just thanks loads for everybody coming and paying their respects. Irvin really, um, Irvin was really proud of his job with the CHP and he loved and cared about each and every one of you. Willie, you were a staple in his life and thank you very much for being here. Debbie, you too. Patsy's girls, what will we do without you? You've been there for us, and thanks for all the good times and the parties. <laughs> anyway, I know I'm forgetting people. I just want to say thanks for everybody coming. I know it was a long drive for some of you, but he really loved each and every one of you. And really, really loved his life and the life that he had down here with us. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. So, a couple of words for Herb. Uh, Great husband, great friend, absolutely, the, the best grandfather, Papa, to the kids, we'll miss you, um, I, I, I don't have too many words to say, but he was a great guy, he, he did wonderful things for Janet, my kids, and uh, we love them. Love them. Anyone else? Anyone want to say anything? Hi you guys, I'm Mary. I'm Irv's sister. I know a lot of you do not know me, but I know a lot about all of you. <laughs> Tinkerbell parties? Oh, you think I haven't seen those pictures? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the crack the egg with one hand? Yeah, that was a big deal to him. And I finally mastered it, and he said, yeah, but can you do two in one hand? I'm like, oh, come on, come on. Willie, you know, you're his brother. Charlie, you're like in every lighter photo. And the guys who you work, he worked with, you gave him personal vacation days. We all know how important those days off are. And you gave those days off to him. And I know it was wonderful for him to be able to spend time with Janet. So thank you, all of you. I hope you will come and introduce yourself to me. and. Um, let me know who you are. This is my niece, our niece, Yvonne. I'm not talking about Please, I do want to know all of you. Um, you know, any friend of hers is, of course, a friend of mine. I love y'all. Just to let everyone know, there is more food, so if you'd like to grab a plate, go ahead. We have another one. Hi, I'm Heather, I'm his granddaughter, Evan. So I was talking to Janet, me and niece, I'll call her that for now, and um, on Friday I'm just talking to her and I'm like, you know, he was my grandpa because I never met my biological grandpa. And he was always there for me. He was a really good person. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> his motorcycle broke down one day. 
or well, it didn't break. His battery died, and he was really frustrated. But he was watching me, and he promised me he'd take me on a ride. So we had to go in his truck and go to the battery store and get a battery. And he spent like two hours fixing his bike just so we could go on a motorcycle. Cage oh <laughs> hang us by your toenails. <laughs> I knew he was never as good as, but you know, once he got Tessa, he actually had somewhere to put us. <laughs> so, so, you know. My husband to this day still talks about I was off visiting my family and he was home alone. He heard this loud, rambunctious chatter going on, and of course, it was Bob and Gigi over um, having a fun night out in the yard. And of course, that. Chris went over to um, investigate and immediately just invited him over and he had the time of his life, like he talks about it all the time. And um, I'm just so grateful that we've had such loving neighbors. Um, whenever we brought our daughter over, Hattie was two, um, she just felt so comfortable with him and approaching him and wanting to um, kind of take over Tessa's spot in the chair. Uh, it's just been wonderful to be a part of Irv and Janet's life, to see them, the example that you guys have given to us as a married couple, the love that both of you have expressed to each other and open your hearts and your homes to us. We really love him, we miss him, we hope that you never leave, <laughs> so we can always have you as a wonderful neighbors um, and cherish those times. Thank you. I'm, uh, I'm Chad, I'm Janet's oldest son. Most of you don't know me, you probably might have seen a picture of me. Uh, I live in Texas. Um, uh, uh, um, I didn't get to meet her uh, once or twice, maybe. The first time I met her was at Travis's wedding. So, um, and as most of you can see, and everybody in my family was like, I'm the largest member of my family. So to meet somebody of my size, it's kind of odd for our family. Um, so when I met him, the warmness that he had immediately was, was openly felt. At the time, my daughter was a year and a half ago, and he was totally cool with my daughter. So a couple years go by, he finally convinces her to get on the plane. My mom doesn't like to fly. And so they come out. And they're just making kind of a long weekend out of it. And at the time of year, in May in Texas, it's summer. So we're sitting there thinking, we're like, what can we do? Let's go do something like that. We go to SeaWorld. And by this time, my daughter's old enough to ride roller coasters. My son's scared to death. Mom and Logan, my boy, ride the kitty coaster all the time. Her, myself, and my daughter, the adrenaline guy, find every single roller coaster. And I don't know what they have here, but they have this one ride, and it's like a big Norwegian rap type ride. They pull you up the hill, and then they send you down. And I remember we're on it in Earth, I guess, thinking that the weather's like California, these are jeans. We're all in shorts and blood blocks, these are jeans. So we go on this ride, and we just throw all down the hill, and we get off, and it's just like, my daughter says, let's do it again, Papa, let's do it again. He goes, okay, there's no line. Get us right back on. So we do that. He gets up. He goes, Oh, I'm going to feel this tomorrow. Hey, Papa, you want to go on the roller coaster? Your feet get to hang off. Absolutely. <laughs> so afterwards, and he, I can look at him and he, he's not. <laughs> so we do it. We spent the whole day there. We go back to the house. And then we have a barbecue. We go back uh, and one of the moments that I remember, I don't get emotional. Everybody in my family is like, um, my, my wife and my mom and my daughter went, uh, that was also Logan's birthday. They went to town. Okay, I live out in the sticks. Go to town is 25 minutes. That's the closest way to the so they go get the birthday cake and get some stuff for my son's birthday party. <coughs> my son is four. He's about to turn four. Sitting in the backseat. Now granted, this is the first time my son has ever met her. 
and him and I were in the front seat, we were driving down, and from the back, the back seat, here, I said, hey, Papa, he goes, yeah, buddy, I love you. Oh, hey. <laughs> he has this kind of amused grin on his face, slightly uncomfortable, but you can see the joy. I love you too, buddy. I will never forget that. Yeah. So. Awesome. My kids love them. My wife love them. And more importantly, and my nieces, my nephews, my brother, my sister, my mom. And most importantly, through this whole thing, the one thing I said is no matter how painful this is, the one thing that is most important to me is how happy he is. My wife, my wife, my mom has so much shit in her life, but he was the absolute best thing that ever happened to her. And I cannot say to him that. And I hate the fact that he didn't get to say that to her. But her, God bless you. We love you. Thank you so much. Just gonna raise our cups to him. 
So to her, we love you. Thank you guys for coming. I don't have any music to play, so I'm sorry. Uh, see, yeah. not, not today. Today's not today. Thank you. One more? Sorry, I'm a little blurry. Okay. We have a out of country speaker here. Where are you from? She's from Scotland. Oh my god. I love her accent. I can't hear that. Is it cool, guys? Trav? Go? Travis? Amy? Is it cool? Oh? Okay. We, we, uh, again, we want to uh, do a good toast. Hey, Travis, come on up here, man. Are you from Scotland? You're, you're, you're white as can be. Nice to see you. <laughs> right, we want to do a toast for her. Uh, again, this is one of the, um, the Scotland, Scotland from Patsy's. Yeah, Patsy's. Yeah, we're from Irish bar, right? Yeah. Well, you're from Scotland. Okay, it's cool. All right, we're, we're good. Guys, are we all in a, a court that is cool? Where are you all? It's good. All right. Well, we all know our flight, the tequila. Um, yeah. We don't all have tequila today, but here's a toast to our from Scotland and from all our girls over there. Lang may your lum reek, which means you will live on forever. Earth, we love you. Thank you. Hey guys. Anybody else want to talk? Anybody want to sing? Sing. A joke?